Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, attendees of the 29th edition of the European Conference on Networks and Communications, EUCNC 2020. My name is Vlatko Lipovac and I'm the TPC chair and your host these days. Finally, the time has come for my great pleasure to welcome you to this event, which was supposed to take place live in Dubrovnik, but due to the well-known unfortunate circumstances that have almost shut down the world, we decided to take the only realistic option available and switch the event to virtual. This was not an easy decision to take, as we will unfortunately not have an opportunity to show and demonstrate to you all good things that we have been carefully preparing throughout almost two years for you to see, feel and taste in our beautiful city, the jewel of the Mediterranean. Therefore, as a modest compensation behind the scene, we still keep the flavor and spirit of Dubrovnik as if the event was really happening here. However, apart from our disappointment as our heart and successful work on organizing the event in Dubrovnik suddenly became in vain, we managed to find motivation to turn everything possible to virtual, whatever it meant to us at that time. Although aware that this was not a lossless substitute and that we would have to make substantial compromises program-wise. With this regard, it was especially painful to cancel the exhibition part of the program, for which, by the way, we found a perfect fit in the formerly targeted venue, as it has been a crucial part of the UCNC heritage, supporting it as a premier forum for presentation of research results and the best meeting point for technology visionaries and innovators from academia and industry to exchange their newest results and experience in this cutting edge industry. Under very new circumstances, our main sponsor, the European Commission, as well as our platinum patron, Huawei Technologies, continue their support, which has enabled and greatly eased continuation of the UCNC and the transition of the edition to virtual. Our special thanks go to them. Nevertheless, in spite of such serious obstacles, we have done our best in organizational and program sense that throughout the course of this event, still we can live up to our motto, the connectivity revolution, as EUCNC 2020 not only addresses 5G that is on its way to maturity, but also the vision on beyond 5G as well as even 6G being underway to provide much more than just an evolution to even wider bandwidth and lower latency, but become a key enabler of end-to-end -end solutions through solving ever-growing challenges in research and development, manufacturing and exploitation of the exciting new technology for connecting the world at a pace it has never seen before. Now I'm handing over the word to my colleague, co-chair, Professor Felipe Carlos, who will address program issues of the event. Felipe. Thank you, uh, Professor Vlatko. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here today. I'm Filipe Cardoso, PC co-chair of UCNC 2020. This year, uh, it is the 29th edition of UCNC. And this year, we have faced a huge challenge due to the COVID-19 pandemic that changes almost everything around the world. So, well, this year edition will be different, but for sure it will be a success thanks to all of you. Under the motto of the Connectivity Revolution, UCNC will be the online meeting point for everyone in the communications world, both from academia and industry. It is a great pleasure to welcome you uh, all at the online edition of UCNC 2020. During two days, we will have 14 regular sessions. We will have two poster ones organized in six different tracks. We will not have the chance to meet face to face but for sure, all of us will make the chat sessions the most interactive ones of every time 
and everywhere. We have received 134 submissions from 44 countries, not only from Europe, but also about 25% from other regions, namely Asia Pacific, USA, Middle East and Africa, Canada and Latin America. And as usual, each paper was reviewed by at least three reviewers and the overall acceptance ratio was about 50%. So let me thank all of you, authors, track co-chairs and reviewers for your commitment to make it work. Both today and tomorrow, the conference program starts and ends with the highlight of the latest research trends provided by outstanding keynote speakers from academia and industry. Also, we will have three panels focused on open RAM, cybersecurity, and 5G for verticals. This is really a unique opportunity to listen to key players in the area and to share experiences with them during the live interaction sessions. I'm grateful to have the chance to welcome them here and I would like to, to express to all of them all my gratitude. Well, let me finish with special thanks to the organization, of course, and IEEE, and as well as to Huawei Technologies, as said, our Platinum patron, that always believed in us from the beginning to make UCNC 2020 a huge success. So please enjoy UCNC 2020. Please, Vlad, the floor is yours. Thank you, Felipe. Now I'm handing over the work to our general chair, Mr. Pierce O'Donoghue. Director of the Future Networks Directorate of DG Connect at the European Commission. Pierce, please. Thank you, Vladko. Good morning, everybody, and thank you, Felipe, as well. It's a great honor to be with you, and I'm not going to repeat everything that you've said, but it is, of course, uh, quite remarkable that despite the effects of COVID and the very responsible decision that you took, we're all very sad that we can't be there in Dubrovnik. Uh, despite all of the hard work that you put in with the team into preparations for the exhibition and for the physical event. But we're also looking forward to the content of the discussions and panels over the next couple of days that Felipe has just referred to. Because the decision to uh, not hold the conference physically was one that was forced upon us. But now we are showing that online and internet-based interactions are not only possible but actually still very useful in this time of COVID and it's very important for us that the conference took place. We didn't want to cancel because we need you, the community, to discuss recent developments in 5G and communications technologies and also share your views and ideas about shaping uh, the future landscape, both in Europe and globally, for communication systems. So this event, EUCNC, which is still in its spirit in Dubrovnik, is very important for us in the European Commission, uh, and that is why we continue to be uh, such uh, ardent supporters of the process. Because 5G offers great opportunities for Europe's economy and society. And COVID has shown that once again. We've seen just how important high-speed networks have been in playing a crucial role in keeping large parts of the economy and society in general going during the lockdown. And now we hope for the recovery. So we need to accelerate the progress in 5G deployment to meet the challenge of the recovery for the good of all sectors of the economy. But unfortunately, in a number of member states, we've heard announcements about delays in spectrum auctions, and in investment plans by operators. And that is very alarming uh, for investment plans in 5G and for our timetable with regard to the rollout of 5G, because they are expected to play a key part in the transformation of all parts of our economy and society. To meet the challenges of the COVID crisis, on the 27th of May, we, the Commission, presented a major recovery package of financial instruments, and that was aimed at kick-starting the EU economy and helping us to build out of the crisis. And it involved a budget proposal that is unprecedented in scale and in ambition. With the Next Generation EU Fund for Recovery and Resilience, helping business to work out of the crisis, and financial instruments focusing specifically on investment 
the Commission's proposals in our multi-annual financial framework reaffirm our ambition to support the growth and development of European industry and European infrastructure. Now, it's very significant that the whole package as presented by the Commission focuses on achieving our dual ambitions for green and for digital, not just going back to the way things were, but building for the future a greener society and environment and a more digital society and economy. Now, research and uh, ICT development of digital infrastructures and technologies are central to this package, central to the Commission's vision for recovery and growth in Europe. They consolidate our previously stated policy ambitions, particularly on the Green Deal and on the economic front. And in saying that, where investments are more crucial than ever, we have to maintain the calendar for 5G rollout and deployment as much as possible, because that will be very important for the economy. You know the effects that that technology can have and is already having with regard to different sectors of the economy. We need that to become a reality for Europe as a whole. We had already announced in February in our digital future package, the preparation of an updated action plan for 5G and the transition to a focus on our research and investment and our research and in investigation work on 6G. And of course that goes hand in hand with an unflinching focus on the rollout and deployment of 5G, focusing, for example, on 5G corridors for connected and uh, automated mobility, as well, including, by the way, railway corridors. So we will reassess deployment progress and we will look at gaps and identify gaps in the planned 5G networks for Europe. In the medium to long term, the strategy should really represent a, a paradigm shift between consumer services towards infrastructure and services solutions for vertical industries. It's not that we're going to somehow lose sight of the consumer and the end user, but we believe that the driver for so much of the innovation and investment will be those industrial services and the platform service solutions for industry. The rollout of 5G will also be a major contribution to meeting our Green Deal policy goals for 2030. And that's in terms of greening sectors through the use of ICT and in both logistics, transport and communications themselves being more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. We're also looking for a new forward-looking vision for investment in pan-European networks and services. There will be a strong single market approach and it will be aligned with Europe's strategic needs and with our cybersecurity requirements as evidenced in the recent 5G toolbox. Those are issues which reflect the strategic importance of 5G and communications technologies as the backbone of the entire economy and providing services to citizens and security for governments and countries. So the 5G PPP, which has been our core instrument in delivering research uh, and investment um, and development at the moment is in its final phase. We have 5G trials, which projects are well underway. And the last call from phase three of that plan will be linked to the next multi-annual financial framework. We already have a first wave of projects selected in the areas of hardware innovation for 5G, as well as additional connected and automated mobility corridors. And they will start right after the summer. Then in the autumn, the projects in the last two topics of the public-private partnership, which cover software innovation and smart connectivity systems, they will fill the picture and, and complete the picture and helping us to link this work with the partnership that is proposed for the next MFF. But we have to be looking forward as we plan for that new partnership on smart networks and services. Our commissioner, my boss, Commissioner Breton, has already announced his wish to see Europe positioning itself for the upcoming 6G race. So as we move to significant investment and work on deployment on 5G, we have to already be looking at the research and standardization challenges for 6G. That has been further confirmed, our ambitions in this regard, in the cybersecurity toolbox that we presented in January, where it was recognized that we needed to see 
greater security of supply and guarantees that anybody who provided network or infrastructure equipment or services in Europe was meeting the highest level of security standards. That is something which we will focus on also in the next public-private partnership on 16. And that's a very timely initiative and one in which we hope many of you will be involved. In fact, we want you to be at the core of this new Smart Networks and Services Partnership, together with a wider constituency coming from both the cloud, the edge computing, and particularly from the IoT communities, all of which will form the core technologies for this 5G, 6G vision that we have for Europe. We see this as a key opportunity to consolidate our technological advantages, to create a greater European industry for those new cut, um, uh, cutting edge technologies in the global domain, while working, of course, with our global partners. So that's a very important message that I wanted to give to you, is that we have to shift up a gear, both to get us out of the crisis, but then a new partnership that represents our commitment to building on the assets we have, create industrial capacities where we have been weaker in some cases. And that, of course, is much more than just running RMI projects. Now, I don't in any way dismiss the importance of that research and development. That is the core of Europe's ability to develop the technologies and to be at the head of the race in terms of technologies and standardization. But devices, connected objects, computing platforms, those are areas where Europe needs to be present and in present in depth, as well, of course, as the work that we're doing on connectivity. And on connectivity, we have to make sure that Europe plays a strong role in the new business approaches that are being taken by different uh, technologies, different actors, such as, for example, Open RAN or ORAN, as it's sometimes called, uh, which we must look at and we must understand and harness the development that that represents. Now, I fully expect that in this conference, the panel on open technologies will shed some light on how Europe can best be positioned uh, in this new domain, where actors, some of our global competitors, are moving with very high ambitions uh, with regard to domestic players. It's also in essential that we ensure a diversified supply chain available to Europe, which meets our technical and security standards. Uh, and that is where we hope that the cybersecurity panel of the conference will shed light on the steps that we need to take forward. So our initiative in 60 is timely. Um, many other regions are also uh, announcing plans with regard to 6G. And there is a renewed industrial ambition behind those plans. We need to be at the head of this race. Our colleagues in Finland, for example, have already launched a 60 flagship initiative, but I'm confident that an entire fleet will soon join the flagship. Uh, we see several drivers for that initiative. Let me just mention them very briefly. First of all, moving ahead with the industry digitization and the penetration of verticals. Now that started with 5G. In fact, it was what marked Europe out from those in other regions who were putting a much greater emphasis on consumer products, video, et cetera. But it is now clearly accepted as being what makes 5G so important. Covering a wide set of use cases that uh, will really push the limits of 5G performance. Secondly, supporting societal issues. Again, is an important framework and we need to act there on two fronts. We have to drastically reduce the energy consumption of connectivity and services platforms. So that means technology, communications technology, this industry getting its act together in terms of our green responsibility. And then of course, the other wing is using these platforms, using these technologies to reduce energy consumption and efficiency and sustainability in vertical domains, all sectors of the economy and society. We have other societal concerns that we have to take very seriously. For example, the problems or perceived risks of EMF radiation is critical for our citizens and we must be able to engage with them and understand and explain the issues as the technology develops. And 
I would also encourage you to take this seriously, particularly as we have seen some very strange claims, for example, linking EMF radiation or even 5G itself to the COVID uh, virus. Uh, and unless we engage seriously in explaining the science and explaining the technology, we will continue to have rather strange issues like that, which could undermine our investment efforts and our uh, efforts to support development of the economy. We also should be very careful in ensuring that we are meeting a wider range of the societal development goals. And that is something which we, the Commission, will come back to you with you, the industry, and with the research community. And my, my, my third point is that we need to uh, integrate other advanced technologies, whether it's artificial intelligence or blockchain, into the platforms to increase competitiveness. This could be a whole new class in virtual, physical, and physiological information. That's a new opening, a very interesting area. And of course, all of the applications that can assist in healthcare directly or indirectly, are something which we now see the importance of. So our Smart Networks and Services Partnership, which you'll be hearing a lot more about in the coming months, on 6G, it's advancing well. We have uh, now announced plans to propose a joint undertaking, which is a model that allows us to join the forces between private and public stakeholders. It uh, brings together industry, European Union uh, authorities, but also the member states, and it allows for a strategic decision-making level at the highest level. But in no way are we seeking to get rid of the element of industry cooperation that we have seen in the 5G PPP. So the Smart Networks and Services Framework, or joint undertaking, it will be built on two pillars. First of all, research and innovation under our framework program, which is now going to be called the Horizon Euro program. Um, and coordination of 5G deployments, mainly under our investment and spending programs. That's called CEF2, digital, uh, the Digital Europe program, but also where member states themselves can draw down money from the InvestEU program and from the new recovery financial instruments that have just recently been um, announced. So the partnership will allow us to develop our technological sovereignty um, and it will allow us to ensure that everybody is meeting the requirements of the 5G cybersecurity toolbox and that member states have a clearer vision as to how the technology actually is integrated into all elements of their economy and society and to work with industry to ensure that that is safe and that critical infrastructures remain uh, safe and protected as we develop. It will also, of course, contribute to the uh, green transition, as I have said, and meet crises such as the COVID-19 crisis, both in terms of the technologies for healthcare, for a health crisis response, but also for economic recovery. So that is really an ambitious plan. It is something which my colleagues will be talking to you about in the, today and tomorrow in the conference. You will be hearing from us. And we really want the community of researchers uh, uh, research organizations, universities, and industry at all levels to come together as the core of our new 6G SNS partnership. As I've said, working with those working on cloud computing, edge computing, internet of things in this new ecosystem, which is crucial for Europe's economic recovery and strategic autonomy. So I wish you an excellent conference. Thank you all for attending, and I'll hand you back to Vladko. Thank you. Thank you, Piers. Uh, thank you very much for important messages that you have uh, disseminated to this community. Uh, now we will continue with the live interaction regarding the first keynote.